Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Simran and I'm a final year medical student studying at Imperial College London. For those of you that are new here, I make videos about medicine, lifestyle, fashion, whilst keeping it real with you guys about my journey throughout medical school. Since I started this YouTube channel, some of my most asked questions have been around how did you get into medical school? What grades did you get? Where else did you apply? I really want to study medicine. How did you do it? I've decided to address all of that um, and I'll be taking you through my journey of how I got into study medicine at my dream university. I'll also be sprinkling in some tips and tricks on what worked for me and how I managed to get four interviews and three offers all from London medical schools. If you're further into the application process I'll have everything timestamped below so you can click on specific sections that are applicable to you. Yeah let's get into it. My journey really started when I started looking into my GCSE options and understandably at such a young age I had no idea what I wanted to do. I really enjoyed maths and I was good at it so I took maths, econ, double science. When I turned up to my economics classes I was like literally falling asleep in the class and it's so embarrassing for me that was so out of character and I just really did not enjoy it whilst all of that was going on I really actually enjoyed my science classes I never really saw myself as this like sciencey person and then I was torn between switching from double science to triple science and dropping econ on the last day of being able to change our GCSE options I kid you not guys 15 minutes before it was some dramatic moment I ran in and I opened the door and I was like I want to change my GCSE options, can I please do it? That's the best decision I made back in the day when I was like 14 years old and I guess my journey really begins from there. The whole point of me telling you guys this story is that pick the subjects that you enjoy during your GCSEs and your A-levels. If during your taster week or your induction week like myself you don't enjoy it, it's never too late to change. If you don't like the subject you're not going to be able to give it your best shot and actually have fun while you're doing it. In terms of grades I got a mixture of A stars and A, I got 10 A stars and two A's at GCSE. So for my A-levels I ended up picking biology, chemistry, maths and geography. I get a lot of questions asking what A-level should I do? I don't really enjoy maths, should I pick math? Firstly the subjects that matter the most to a lot of medical school, biology or chemistry and then apart from that it's really your choice about what you want to do. Like I said before pick something that you're going to work hard for. I'd also recommend looking at the websites of your top universities that you're looking to apply to. Another question I get asked is should I do three A-levels or should I do four A-levels? levels and again this is really up to you some people I know took five A levels take as many as you think you can handle there's no point doing loads of A levels but not being able to meet the entry requirements for example going from year 12 to year 13 I knew the next year was going to be really stressful so I just decided okay I'm gonna allow geography and just do three A levels in terms of work experience I did two weeks in hospital and one week at a GP surgery this enabled me to get an idea of what primary and secondary care is like and my family don't really know any doctors in the UK. So I remember having to like find um, emails of doctors online at my local hospitals for like such a long time, two, three months. I never got any replies. It was just so sad. One day I was like, okay, I need to take matters into my own hands. And I asked my mum to take me to my local hospital with my CV and my cover letter in hand. I don't even know what I was thinking, right? Like I turn up to the receptionist and I'm like, I'm an aspiring medical student. I'm looking for work experience with the HR team, made a few phone calls and then I ended up in like the hematology department. I spoke to one of the consultants who was really nice and he was like, yeah, that's fine. And I was like, oh my God, thank you so much. I would definitely wouldn't do this now, but that was how I got my first ever work experience. From that work experience, I found out there's usually a list compiled by the hospital, which has all the consultants who are keen to take on work experience students. I'll link a few examples down below. Also with the pandemic going on, work experience can be difficult to kind of sort out. So a few resources that can be used to find work experience Experience, the BSMS virtual work experience, observe GP, following like doctors and medical students on social media. It also gives you a realistic insight into what medical school is like and what being a doctor is like, which is the whole premise of work experience. In terms of volunteering, I volunteered at my local care home. I did it once a week on and off for like around three years. I think back to that time and oh, it puts such a massive smile on my face to really help improve my communication skills, learn a bit more about um, caring for patients with dementia. Overall, it was such a wholesome experience. If you do something for a really long period of time, for me, that was volunteering. It really shows that you're a type of person who's 
committed. If given the opportunity to study medicine, you'd also be committed to studying medicine. It's a long course, it's a lengthy training program, so you've got to be committed and doing something for a long period of time really kind of shows that. Now we're going to move on and talk about extracurricular activities. My secondary school didn't have a wide range of after school clubs that I could go to. I was always really interested in drama and performing, a bit of a drama queen right here. And my mum found me a local um, drama club that I could go to. It was so much fun. I performed at like festivals, did random performances around the place, doing the lambda exams as well. I ended up getting to like level seven, like which I still can't believe. I also did like other stuff like organizing um, events as part of my um, um, local youth club within my religious community. I played badminton. I wasn't very good at it, but I literally went for the social life. I'll let you in on a little secret, okay? Not many people know this, but I'm gonna put it out there. I also was part of the air training course. I learned really cool things like how to fly a glider, went on camps. I really, really enjoyed all of these things uh, when I was doing them. But there came a time where I was like, okay, now there is too much going on around me. And I like dropped a few activities here and there so that I could you know focus on studying when it comes to extracurricular stuff just do the things that you enjoy not because you want to show someone at medical school you know I've done this I've done that but genuinely do it for yourself because through doing all these things I developed so much as a person and I learned so many different skills also just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean you have to this part of the whole application process is what makes you unique so now we're going to be talking about extracurricular things that can be done which are still academically inclined these can include things like an EPQ, which is an extended project qualification, where you get to do independent research and write up an essay and you have guidance from a supervisor. Things like reading a book to do with medicine or attending lectures and talks at different universities. I only ended up doing the latter. King's College London offered an incredible outreach program which hosted lecture series. These lectures included going into different specialties, help with applications to medical school. I remember this so clearly, a group of us used to go to these King's lectures and being all starry-eyed when we entered the campus and we were like wow like we could be studying here one day it was just so cool let's talk about entrance exams and whew, this was a stressful period of time the summer of year 12 I was looking into booking my at the time known as UK cat but now UCAT I wanted to do it right at the end just a few days before I was going back to school I then set myself four to six weeks for me to revise for the UCAT. I know I used quite a few resources, but the only thing I actually remember being like super, super helpful was Medify. Before the exam, it was just a bit of a blur because I was so nervous. But I remember people in the year above telling us, if you do really well in your UCAT, the guy at the desk will fold your paper in half and then give it to you. If you don't do that well, he'll just hand it to you without folding it. God knows how they knew this information yet. When I came out, I was literally sitting there waiting for my name to be called. I was focusing so hard on whether he folded that piece of paper or not. I was like, is he gonna fold? Is he not gonna fold? Then like he folded my piece of paper and then he was like, Simra and Hilari. And then I went up and I was like, okay, this is a good sign. He was like, oh, it seems like you're really good at maths. In my head, I was like, oh my God, I've smashed it. When I got the piece of paper, it was just all numbers. You get all your scores for the four different sections and then you have to work out the average yourself. And then I kept like keying in the average to my phone and the average never changed. How? He folded the piece of paper and he said I was good at math. So how did this happen? I got like around 690. I can't remember the exact score, but it was definitely less than 700. And people in the year above had got in the 700s and the 750s. And I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna get into med school. This is the end of the road for me. Now I know, which is really not the case. I ended up going on student room, like, cause that was like the thing that I was on back in the day. Then I realized that there was this preliminary decile that the UCAT board releases. When I put my average in, it told me that I was within the top 20 to 30%. I was like, what? But I was so grateful at the time. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I've made it. That whole day, I remember it like it happened yesterday. I also did the BMAT for Bay, you know, Imperial. By the time it got to like sitting my BMAT, I just had lost motivation to keep going. I remember my mom having this chat with me that, you know, same, like if you really want to go to Imperial, you need to work. Otherwise, like you're not just going to get a good score in your BMAT. And I was like, yeah, that's so true. Don't worry, mom, I'm going to give it my all for Bay. That meant that I actually started revising quite a 
bit later. I think I had like three weeks to revise for my BMAT. Therefore, I ended up going on the Kaplan course. It was really good because I didn't have that much time to actually revise for it. So I needed all the help that I could get. I remember so clearly the day that the BMAT results came out. Um, it was such a sad day at school. The people that I'd known who had done the BMAT came in and gave each other the looks and we were like, damn. Um, like it did not go that well. I knew Imperial to be one of like the stricter universities. Like if you didn't meet the cutoff, you wouldn't get an interview. It's really interesting because I didn't meet the cutoffs for one of my BMAT sections. When I got my interview like email, I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, like how did this even happen? But that really nicely brings us on to the interviews. I applied to Imperial Bay, Kings, because as you can tell, I went to Kings campus quite frequently because of all these outreach programs, Barts and Birmingham. My school wouldn't let me apply to all London universities. Really didn't want to go anywhere apart from London. I was, uh, I was gonna say I was born. I wasn't born in London, I was born in India, but I was brought up in London. I couldn't really see myself at the time living anywhere else. I got interviews from all the universities I applied to. Birmingham was my first interview and it was MMI and so was Kings and Barts and Imperial at the time were a panel. I know Imperial has now changed to MMI. I went to my Birmingham interview and I really messed up. I was so nervous. Yeah, and I was just like really like flustered in that interview. So of course I did not get an offer from Birmingham. My next interview was Bart and oh my God, when I tell you the students that I met there who took me around campus and spoke to me while we were waiting in a big room, they were so nice and so welcoming. I felt like, oh my God, this is such a nice university. At my Birmingham interview, I didn't really speak to anyone before the interview that much, but at Bart's like, I was just talking so much to like so many different people. So I felt like I let go of all my nervousness uh, by just talking it out. The night before the interview, I had a bath and I just spoke through the different um, like questions that I could get asked and just closed my eyes and visualized the whole like process. And I think that really helped me as well. Then my next interview was King's. You know, it was just me turning up to my local campus that I had been going to every week. So, you know, I knew my way around. I knew where the toilets were because your girl always needs to pee. A few other people from my school had the interview on the same day, the same time. And we were part of the same circuit as well. When I came out of the station, I like, I glanced over and I had two students from like the same school as me. We gave each other a nod. I felt like, you know, this camaraderie between us. I feel like we're all this together. And it was like a high school musical moment. Now we finally come to the big one, Imperial. It was my last interview and I felt like all the other interviews I had gone through were like working me up to this big moment of, of my Imperial interview. It's so crazy to think that at the time I was trying to figure out like, you know, where this Sir Alexandra Fleming building was. Little did I know that those orange sofas would become the epicenter of my social life within the next few years. I just, I just can't guys, I just can't. I started talking again to everyone I saw so I could like speak the nerves out again. One by one, people started getting called up um, and started going in and then came my turn to go give the biggest interview that I have done <laughs> till date. <laughs> my name got called, like someone came to collect me and I was like smiling and I was like, hi. When I was asked like some of the standard questions, like why do you want to study medicine? I remember like uh, talking about all my reasons why I wanted to study medicine, um, how I had a realistic idea of what medicine would entail, you know, my drive, everything that I've done so far. And at the end of it guys, I said thank you. Like they had just been listening to my speech about why I wanted to study medicine and I thanked them. I think I was just so excited and so hyped and so nervous that I said thank you. Like what is wrong with me? I carried on the interview acting like nothing weird had happened at that point. But yeah, I came out and I remember my mom sitting there smiling on the orange sofas and me smiling back at her. And my mom, you know, out here doing the most to suss out if Imperial is a good university for me to go to or not. And my mom was like, yeah, so I spoke to the current students and they were saying that, you know, Imperial's not actually that snaky. They said it was competitive, but it was also really nice. All that was left was doing my A-levels after everything had finished. I'm going to now insert a video of me getting my Imperial offer after the interview and you can see how emotional I am. <laughs> I can't even. That was my journey to medical school. I can't stop smiling whilst I'm thinking about the whole experience because being such a journey, it was tough, you know, balancing everything that was going on. And it's so worth it when you get there in the end and it feels like you're literally standing there on top of the world and you're like, yes, I've done it. And obviously you don't have to do 
the exact same things I did. This is the beauty of it. Everyone has a different journey into medicine. This was mine and you will have one too. I also wanted to make this video specifically after one of the doctors was really, really shocked that I went to a state school and I'm studying medicine. I just want this video to highlight to everyone that no matter what school you go to, what your social background is, your race, gender, any of these social constructs, these things don't determine whether you can study medicine or not. You don't need to have some fancy school on your records. You don't have to know of doctors to get you work experience. You don't have to go to these insanely expensive courses. Yes, 100% I agree that all these things may make an individual's journey a bit smoother. That doesn't mean that we all can't have the same destination. Everyone has their own journey, but we will get there. If you truly, truly want it, you just have to give it your all and just work hard for it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, comment down below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.